This is the new coop door for the chicken coop. Hey, it's missing a hole. No, it's not. It's right here. <laughs> got, got it all. It's all glued together. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the braces off so that we can actually, um, so that we can see how it's going to work. How'd you like those new uh, braces it's you got? It's great to have all these clamps. I, I'm clamps. finally getting to the point that I can actually build things with the clamps I had because I have enough to hold. Every time we go to Harbor Freight, we'll buy a couple more, a couple more, until he has all the ones he needs. I don't know if you can ever have all the ones you need <laughs> because um, everything you go to build is going to require a little bit more. So the door is going to fasten up like that. Now, as you can see, it could it could use being painted. This will set in here, and it slides in like this. And to latch it, that falls oh, over like that. You put goodness. a latch in there, and this. You pull this up to, to make it go up is how it comes up. You can pull it with this right there. Okay, so we're not trying for an automatic door. This is human eyes on the chickens. Yes. yes. Okay. It's very important. All right. So I've got these and these to fasten it on with. Um, Time. Taking a picture. So now we're just going to fix the top so that from the inside. Yep. Because yep. this wood is just kind of falling apart. All right, we have all of the holes that critters could get into here. And this door's coming off. But there we go. Very nice, Jim. Kay. We made use of what was here to. to get a door put together that made using the hole that existed which was crooked and ugly and look what you did even you you made this come down yeah so, so nice. I, yeah I, what I did was I took this board and then another board like this that wasn't as wide and glued it behind it so that this had a place to fit into but I knew that this board and these boards were the same thickness so any kind of swelling with moisture in this would have stuck. Uh. So I just took the saw and I peeled down both sides so that it can slide in. I even peeled down the bottom so that it can slide into the groove down there. So that all around it there's, you know, just this small gap, nothing that any animal can do anything with. And then we're sealing these up here. And and we reinforced it on the bottom. There's no openings down here at all. Right. Uh, and it also gave this a resting place. A ledge, place so right, it doesn't right have to come it. down. Now they have to hop over that, but these chickens can fly 10 feet in the air. I don't think they'll have any problem with that. And then this, we can just put a uh, carabiner or something in here that's challenging for critters to open. These are the chickens that we got from the auction. and they were, we, they were in two boxes that were labeled chicks. And they are, but it appears we have bantams and probably half of them yeah, roosters. Let me say this, bantam chicks and normal chicks, they're all small. Uh, we had no idea that these were bantams. And they're not labeled when they auction them. Now as they grew, they didn't grow as fast. And they're to the point now that they they really should be Big. pretty much full size, and they are, but not <laughs> as normal chickens. And Bantams. there's a couple that are so tiny, so tiny and that you should have guessed while they were growing the way they acted, as fleety as they were and as fast as they were, yeah. that there was something different about them. So we, we know will recognize that next. <laughs> we know nothing about bantams. So, if you have ever raised them, we don't know if they're worth keeping. We don't know if they'll pull their own weight. We know their eggs are smaller. Um, half of them look like roosters. Some of them are just dang cute with their little crops on their head and their bare necks. But, um, help educate us on these. Now, yeah, we, we so that you know research. what we did, we um, put chicken wire on the top so they are completely in 
They can't yes, get they out. They can't get out and nothing, and no this, aerial predators coming in. And this in. is rain gear, I mean rain, shade here on this end. And we've got one little gap right here. And the wire sitting right there waiting for us to put it up on this one. So we had one that jumped out and then went clear up onto the roof. We had to get the water and spray to make them come back down inside. And then we knew it is time to do something to keep them safe. Now, we realize that snakes can get in here, raccoons can get in here, we get it. Um, the point is to keep the aerial predators out. We haven't had problems with the others. We do have a dog that's here. We intend to have other guardian animals here. Uh, so going into the future, uh, there will be some improvements for safety. We would like to thank somebody. Actually, the present came to you. It did. That, was that about my birthday? It or? was, but okay. it was to both of us. It is to both of us. And our heads being chopped off. It's okay to chop off your head. Let's back down. Just a okay. You gonna show? Let's show what we got. We this got, came from. This came from Marianne Lawrence. Actually, Tom, her husband, made these for us. Cut them out. There's a pig. It's so cute. A little, little bit of decorating. And a rooster or chicken. Chicken. Brightened chicken. our day. Yep. We love them. They're great. Thank you so much. If you have not subscribed to Marianne Lawrence's. What is it called? Survive in the 80s. Survive in the 80s. Go over and subscribe to her. She's a, she's, not only is she entertaining to watch, but man, she just gives super informative uh, how to do videos, one yeah. after another after yeah. another. Yeah. So, our pigs are growing. Yes. We look at people who got pigs before us, and our pigs are really big, aren't they? They look like they're, maybe that's just the breed. But they're growing We were told fast. that red wattles grow slower, but ours is growing pretty fast. Um, we're working on pig feed still. We are... We're still not happy with what we're having no, to buy. No, we're not. <laughs> we're trying to figure out what to replace the protein when we buy, when we have somebody make up our own that's got soy, taking the soy out. It, as the yeah, protein. none of the ingredients they have other than soy is providing any amount of protein, so uh, we got to figure that part out. I mean, out. literally, we've looked all over the nation. We've even called Scratch and Peck for their swine uh, pig feed, and they have it, but we, and when we go to Salt Lake next month, the closest we can get is Twin Falls, and we'd have to drive Whoa. up there to get it. Um, so even... Um, Azure Standard doesn't carry the pig feed. So we're just kind of out there and, and it's just frustrating us. So I'm like taking my own food, my own food and making it and uh, we're going to grow some fodder and... Well, it, yeah, we're going to try the fodder, add that in, um, try to get an understanding of how that really applies. What the percentages yeah, are. Yeah, get the right mix. But you know, if, if it's something if it's a plant that eventually goes into their feed and you're growing it, uh, that seems like a good solution. And that's what we're looking at in the future where, where we're putting the paddocks, we're going to turn that into a growing area and we're going to grow the food, that a lot of the food that they would eat. We're going to so grow oats just, and barley and... It's not, it's not only going to be kale. like a, a grass pasture, but we're going to fill it full of a lot of the good things that they would eat. So. Uh, admittedly, they're going to need other food as well, more protein perhaps, but if we get the right mix, they're going to get the majority of what they need from there. So today I gave them quinoa and barley and um, a soup mix that I wasn't going to eat, and uh, it was full of lentils. So lentils, barley, and, and uh, a little bit of wheat. So have we shown on here that we're training the pigs to the uh, electric wire? No, we have not. Um, they learn quick. <laughs> Poor little ones. <laughs> you feel bad when it happens, but you know, also knowing that it's going to keep them safer. Uh, so, in, in the long run, it'll let us let us paddock on them without. Yeah, it'll be easier. The hog we can move it more time. often if we need to. Uh, all around, it's going to be better for them. Because we saw it done really successful when we went up and uh, 
went Look to the, the workshop for the high tunnel and the family there had them trained to two wires and they said, yeah, they don't get near it at all. So in, in the next <laughs> video, we're, we're going to be moving tomorrow, moving the paddock. And so we'll film some of that and show what we're doing. Our first effort to teach him to train him is kind of sloppy and we're just figuring it out. But we have a good plan like now. Like most of the stuff yeah. we're doing. <laughs> we, we have a much better plan now uh, to make it work. So we'll show some of what we're doing and, and kind of review how it's succeeding for us. And obviously, if this is something you've done successfully, we, we appreciate your input. Uh, this is that, that hive mind where we all have our experiences and our ideas and we can share and we can really learn a lot from it. The only other time we've done pigs, they were done at our neighbor's home. Um, they had them in one, one big corral the whole entire time. We didn't know anything about p pasture raising. We didn't know anything about... I, I knew they needed a better house to be on at night because they didn't have anything. But um, yeah, we're so we're trying to do it right and and it's so hard. Humanely, I think Humanely. Is, is, yeah. is a better term. There you go. Um, we have mostly decided that we're not going to do goats right now. We just can't take on more stuff. The reason I wanted to do them now was to feed the pigs right. the milk. Well, we've been here what now? Uh, a little over three two months. years. Oh, three months. Three yes. months. We have to keep reminding to... ourselves. Oh yeah, it's only been three months. It's okay. We need to be patient with ourselves. We can't do everything all at once. The eventual is, yeah, we'll have animals that are producing milk that we can feed the pigs, and the pigs will have better pasture to be on, and uh, it'll get better. Uh, we've got big ideas. We just can't make them happen all at once. No, I'm, I'm liking that. I'm remembering that relaxing thing by the Mississippi yes. River. Yes. Actually, we're going back there at the end of the week because our son from Utah is coming out to visit his daughter and we get to go be with them for well, two days. We have two grandsons whose birthdays are kind of around this. And time. one that I missed, so three, yes, three yes, sons. So, three. so we're going to catch up on the birthday stuff with them. Uh, when we planned our trip there, this possibility of them going there now was not even nobody had even nobody even thought it. about it so that has us doing two trips to the same place real close together but there's grandkids involved so it's awesome <laughs> yeah it's great just as a reminder we're going to do a live on thursdays at five that's a change we've been doing wednesdays yep. um five central time and that works for us i think I, wednesdays won't work for us anymore and um and then I'm determining whether our videos are going to keep coming out on Saturday or whether we come out on Friday. Just see. We're not getting as many views on Saturday. I think people are just too busy. I am. Let's take a look at here what we've done for the, for the fence for the, the garden yard. There's more plants for this garden. So we have a fence that goes around the whole gardening area. And we've got the startings of a gate. We've got the gate posts. Rinda has painted them green to match some of the other green that we've got going on. So we've still got to build a gate for this. There will be a pathway that goes straight over. There's another gate over here. Rinda's going to go stand in it. And we'll put two posts up there. And we'll make a pathway between the two out of wood chips. So it'll be a nice pathway to come and go to get places. So this area is fenced in. And Rinda's going to explain to you what she's doing with some of this area. We are putting a 4x8 grow box in here. And it's made with bricks and things like this. Yard, yeah, garden. It's really cool. Garden I'll timbers. I'll show it to you as soon as I can get it done. So we're putting one there, and when our sweet potatoes are all done, we're taking that out and we're putting three right here. So they're all in with the garden, and we've taken out that fence that was right by the garden, so we can actually walk up and get into the garden. Easier. Easier. Our green beans were a flop. The pigs love the greens off of them, though. Oh, well, they love the nitrogen nodules too. Yeah. And the um, but bugs just horrible. I can't even explain. And the beans that came on them were like this little, and they just didn't come anymore. So we've dug them up. 
and we've got this tarp right now the the dirt is really really nice underneath there and we're going to put in kale and i think we're going to put in some carrots i have to do some research and then we have low tunnels that go over this whole area for the winter and we're really good at doing winter stuff I think we're better at doing winter than we are summer. <laughs> well, you know, there's less bugs, less problems like that. So, but yeah, we're very eager. We're suppressing the weeds with the tarp here. We'll see how that goes. Uh, we have a lot of this quack grass stuff that grows up and in and around and through and everywhere. So we're fighting that, but it's, it's getting there. Uh, we have trimmed this basil like crazy. Well, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna take it all and do what Lois Wilson said and um, put it all in, in paper bags and get it all dried. Get it all dried. We've got a lot. We're going to get this got... all done before we go on our next trip. Okay. So this will be out. So we'll, we'll tarp this also and then just let the tomatoes keep growing. See, see how long we can keep them producing tomatoes. And our sweet potatoes are doing amazing. And we we you, do have blossoms. You know, you, know the, um, you know the parable of the wheat and the tares? Well, this is our tares. <laughs> And we have determined that you don't reach down and pull those or you end up pulling sweet potatoes. So we're just letting all the wheat and the tares grow together. We, we are told that the, let me find the blossoms. Oh, here's a blossom. Can you open up to that blossom right yeah. there? So we've got blossoms going on. You can see them right there. We have them in several places. It's starting to happen. Okay. And actually, did you just get a bug in you? In my eye, yeah. Okay. Actually, it was Art and Bree when they were over at um, his parents, I believe, that his said that when you see the flower, wait four weeks, and then you harvest. We'll see. <laughs> we keep forgetting to say this. We had some wonderful visit visitors at our home. And then my video did not work whatsoever, so I couldn't even put them on. But we had, who used to be called Win in Idaho, now called the Grateful Sunites, and we had them over here, Jen and Kurt, Kurt. and their four beautiful children. We had such a delightful time, and they're moving here this week. <laughs> Somewhere in this part of uh, Missouri. Somewhere, so. and we're trying to help them get here, so. Uh, we just didn't want to go by without saying hello to them. They started that new channel, The Grateful Sunites. Go over there if you were part of their win in Idaho. Go over and subscribe to the new one because they don't even have 100 people and they need to get that 100 mark. So go help them out. We're excited for them to be here in Missouri with us. We appreciate you being on our journey with us as we figure all of these things out and get this home set up and going. It's a lot of fun. Appreciate all the comments, all the encouragement, and all the ideas. Thanks for being part of this. And what it, else do you want to say? Hey, as always, if you want to subscribe to 12 Weeks of Hardiness, please feel free to do that. We'd love to have you on board. Bye-bye. Bye. See you live Thursday, 5 p.m. Central Time. Oh.